Hey everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Now, first and foremost, we are going to be reviewing the 7900X3D and the 7950X3D today. But you will see in the title that I'm talking about a retest. And that is because uh, it's now time for a new CPU uh, test bench as well as the graphics card test bench. Because if you've not seen, I've just completely restarted the uh, CPU uh, graph stroke bench and we're now testing with 13900K. So there's the first instalment of the test already live on the channel if you'd like to go and take a look at that. I've tested everything from the 1060 up to the 4080 with the main SKUs in between, missing the supers. Uh, so there's lots of graphics cards there and there will be AMD graphics cards uh, coming. That's the next phase of the graphics card rollout. But today, 17 CPUs we have back tested now with a 4090. Now the games are gonna be tested at 1080p, which calm down before you say about it, we're trying to absolutely smash uh, a CPU out. There's not really a great deal of point in testing at 1440p because we'd have to be very specific with the games that we chose with crazy high FPS to be able to max it out. So by testing the games at 1080p, it does mean that uh, we can use more stressful games to try and find CPU bottlenecks. Now we've obviously tested 17 CPUs and then today the review is basically about the 7900X3D and the 7950X3D which we're expecting to do very well in gaming. And in reality, you are going to want to see the 1080p results at this point because of all that extra cash. Now, I'm not gonna waffle on to you about all the stuff that's gone on with the X3Ds because this is obviously after launch. And the reason why it's after launch is AMD effectively had three processors for the press for the whole of the UK to go around everyone. And I've not actually even been given an allocation date yet. Um, so I took matters into my own hands and I've got the 7900X3D and 7950X3D from other sources. Um, now I say other sources, but uh, the AMD are only sending around the 7950. So the fact that I've got the 7900 sits quite well and it also puts this in a relatively good position because the 7800X3D is also going to be coming out soon and uh, the good thing for us having this and with that is they, they're still saying that the 7800X3D has got the possibility of coming in front of the 13900K. So there's a fair amount for us to kind of talk about now but it puts us in a very good place for later. Um, so, as I've said, we have uh, uh, an RTX 4090, which is just being run as is, fit and forget. We uh, have the processors in there. I'm also on a Crosshair Hero uh, motherboard from Asus in the Be Quiet case with Be Quiet cooling. Um, we've gone with just a notch above kind of balanced uh, cooling profile for the fans on the CPU. And it's a good idea if you don't shove your thumb into it when you're talking to people about it. Oh, lots of things to talk about. Now, don't forget, all of the results in this graph have been done within the last few weeks. It's all very, very fresh. And obviously now with the 4090. So properly stressing the absolute bejesus out of everything in this test. Like I said, I don't want to talk to you about too much that's going on with the cash and all the technical stuff because the reviews are already out and it's really now time for us to talk about the data that I found with these. But there is something that I would like to cover from the beginning. And that is if you look, there are two sets of results for the 79, uh, well, for both of the 3Ds anyway. One of them's called old and one of them is just normal. And the old ones will only be in this review and that is because I didn't get read into any of the uh, stuff from AMD uh, in time for launch. So I didn't know about any of the NDAs. I didn't know about any of the specifications. I didn't know officially about any of the reviewers guides or stuff like that. But sadly, what that did mean is uh, I originally tested wrong. But this is going to be something that's actually going to help you guys at home see how critical certain things are. Now, the old results 
were not done with the very latest uh, chipset driver. So you can actually see the impact that chipset driver makes. Now there are th certain things within the processor scheduling and stuff like that, that and effectively how it uh, uses all that extra cash and the cores on the processor. And as you can see in the results, it does have a profound effect on performance. So if you are going to be buying one of these processors and installing it in your current system that you already have, uh, maybe a 7,000, well, you would have a 7,000 series processor in it, make sure that you update your chipset driver at very least because otherwise you are going to be gimping your performance and even in some points it will run worse than the uh, vanilla processors and we actually found that the 5800X3D ran better than it. But obviously that's without the latest chipset driver. With the latest chipset driver it's a very, very different uh, kettle of fish. But I did just want to cover that from the beginning. So power consumption, uh, we noticed that it was considerably lower than the uh, non-3D processors uh, and that can uh, definitely be seen uh, as a positive uh, but it's obviously a little bit to do with like clock speeds and stuff anyway. Now one of the things we did expect with the processors was well we were hoping that gaming was going to be, have a considerable uh, boost in performance but we did expect some of the synthetic CPU specific benchmarks like Blender and Cinebench to take a little bit of a dip in performance compared to maybe the non-3D parts, but more specifically things like the 13900K. And as you can see with the results on the screen with Cinebench and Blender, that was very, very much what happened. Ah, but weirdly, there's always a caveat with these things, and that was uh, Puget Bench, which is uh, effectively a benchmark that runs DaVinci Resolve for you. That benchmark absolutely loved the uh, X3D processors. So quite clearly, that is a very good positive and could be a very good indicator for those of you out there that are content creators or uh, may end up marginally using these professionally. Obviously, maybe it's got a link in with the fact that uh, it's so graphics based anyway. And we are using something like the 4090 with CUDA. So maybe that cache is just helping the throughput. I don't know, know the technical Bob sides of it, but that is definitely a good place to be compared to the other synthetic sort of ones that we have here. It, we did think that maybe Blender would have uh, benefit, benefited from it, but we have tried using our Blender Bench uh, because it's an OC3D specific one that we've got that's 4 million polygons uh, to use that. But we, we've forced that to use the graphics card in the past and not really got anywhere uh, positive with it. And they all run right, roughly the same, which is why we use it in the CPU bench rather than in the graphics card bench. Uh, but anyway, that's more stuff for you to kind of consider. Now, when it comes to gaming, which is obviously the point that most of you are here, there was a monumental leap in performance with uh, the games that definitely utilised the 3D cache. Um, Cyberpunk was the first one out of the hat with a giant leap forward. Don't forget at this point, you can pause if you want to dissect the graphs. Also, if you don't think you've seen enough graphs and data in the video, you can click the link underneath, go to the website, and it's all there, and you haven't got to worry about it pausing and that sort of stuff. And you can still open the images, and they will come up big. But don't worry, it's the, we're on the final throws of the old website. There is a new one coming. We're almost there. Uh, there's really not very much left for us to do yet, but it's just been taking a little bit of time for us to get everything right. Anyway... Uh, Cyberpunk really well. Final Fantasy. Uh, it's one of the new games that we've introduced because as this is a new test suite, we've introduced a load of new games. So please do go and have a look at the website because I can't remember how many runs I have to do for each CPU now, but we've added in a lot 
of extra data. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, another one. Big leap forward, loves the, the graphics, kind of CPU side of it. Um, and then we've also got Rift. People may not play this so much, but it actually does work really well with CPU-based uh, reviews. But the one that really surprised us, because at the end of the day, Total Warhammer is just so very, very CPU limited, this was the one that we didn't know which way it was going to swing. And as you can see, the result has gone to the absolute top end of the graph. Now, this normally is just the one where Intel just rules the roost. So for there to be such a big leap towards the top, it should show you that things have gone really well. And most of them have. Uh, for whatever reason, Crisis Remastered didn't and the other one it's a new one that we're running but it has gone well in some of the other processes and that's factorio uh, so there are a couple of new ones don't forget you can go and see all of the other results on the website there are just pages and pages and pages and every single one of these results has been run recently this is a ground up rebent retest because we've introduced the 4090 into everything now just to stress everything out as much as we possibly can <gasps> deep breaths now at this point i'd like to say don't forget to like subscribe comment talk to your show your dog show your nan whatever um uh, because it does help and we do greatly appreciate it but as you can see we have done an awful lot of testing to kick things off with a stressful graphics card and the X3D processors was the reason why we started doing it. It's just a shame that we didn't get a chance to do it for launch. But as far as gaming goes with a processor, AMD have clearly got it nailed yet again. You may be wondering why we've not delved into overclocking and pushing things to try and you know, like stretch its legs, but there's obviously been some scared tactics going around or, you know, stuff where people have seen processors dying. But what we do need to remember is I have only borrowed these processors. They are going back in the box. They are going back to their owners um, today. And I was specifically asked, please don't overclock the uh, boobs off of them. Um, we'd like them back fully fully working so i was asked just to fit enable uh xmp docp whatever you want to call it basically get the 6000 megahertz memory running at rated and then running my tests if if i get samples from amd where i'm allowed to overclock that will be the point i will spend more time on this and i will come back and revisit so might not be what we would normally have done but i've done the best that i can considering that these didn't even come from the normal places anyway and the reason why that's an empty box is because it's still in there and i need to take it out clean it and then post it back today so lots of information for you to take absorb and make decisions with as far as the 13900k is concerned we uh as you can see it's pretty much smashed it if you're wondering whether ks is in the graphs the reason why it wasn't in the graphs is because we were using the 13900 ks to test the graphics cards so we've only got a finite amount of samples and we have to spread them out where possible but in reality it doesn't matter amd still smash it out of the park so that's all you really needed to know better performance significantly in most stuff as far as uh, gaming is concerned it's away with the fairies some of the um, synthetic stuff and the workstation -y sort of stuff is there or thereabouts where it would have been with the non 3d stuff but weirdly like we said pocket bench resolve where that's a proper 3d massive modeling program that absolutely loved it oh right so should you be buying it uh, I'd probably wait and see what the 7800X3D is like and uh, also what the price is like. And then at that point, you can decide, do you want more cores or do you just want pure gaming performance? Because I think a lot of you are going to be here for pure gaming performance. 
And if that's the way it is, I have a sneaking suspicion that the 7800X3D is probably going to be just about enough for the most of you while saving you a good whack of money as well. Just depends how far down the graphs it starts to come. If you have a one, two, three at the top for uh, AMD and then the 3900K, I'm probably gonna say that the 7800 may be the way to go. But we won't know until AMD sends the samples out, if they do. So, yeah, I'll leave that with you. Please let me know what you think underneath. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share on all of your social media stuff if you would like to. I would greatly appreciate it. But for now at least, this is the tiniest one with another video for you. Out. Ding! Love you, sis.